Hello everyone and welcome back to another video focusing on Power Automate and this is a really good video because we're going to be using Power Automate to extract information from a website. So as you can see on the screen at the moment I've loaded up Amazon and we've done a quick search for Excel books and these other results that we get. So what we want to do with this Power Automate flow is we want it to automatically go to Amazon for us, extract all this information, having done the, the, the search for Excel content, and display that information in an Excel workbook. So obviously, if you happen to do this task on a daily basis, or you just have a lot of information that you needed to do, then Power Automate, once again, gives you a great, quick, and easy to install solution to do just that. So we'll close this window for the time being and we'll open up the Power Automate uh, desktop application, which again we now have on the screen. If you're not familiar with how to get started with Power Automate, you can check one of our previous videos being linked now, actually linked to the playlist. Uh, it's really easy to get started, but as soon as you've done that, you can obviously follow along from this point here. At the moment, we've got no uh, active flow saved. So all we're gonna do is go into create new flow that we can either do at the top left here or by clicking the blue button down the bottom. And the all important first thing to do is to give our flow a name. So we'll call this uh, Amazon uh, Excel Books. Uh, and if I could spell Amazon correct as well, that might help, but there you go, a nice, or hopefully useful name uh, for our flow. So we can see it's been created there, but yeah, we've now got this additional window opening up and it's just getting things ready for us to get started. So the first thing that we need to do is to first launch uh, a, a new instance of our Chrome browser. Uh, that's obviously we need to do this for the content to be loaded so that Power Automate knows and, or has access to the data to extract. So in order to do that, all we need to do is go into our browser automation down the left-hand side here, and we can see we've got multiple options. So you could do this in Firefox or Edge, I'm just gonna stick with Chrome as it's the default browser I have on my system. So all we need to do is drag that into here. And we can see we've got a couple of options. So we could have launch new instance, uh, or you could attach to a running instance. So if you had a version already open, we're gonna just stick with launch new instance because we want this to open a new window every time that we run this. And for me, the website is gonna be HTTPS, and we'll do amazon.co.uk. Okay, window state, we don't need anything here and we don't need to worry about any advanced information either. We'll simply click save and not much is gonna happen at this stage, but we'll just run this so that we can see what will happen. So if we click run, and I think it's gonna probably open up on a different screen. No, we can see it's open on the screen, perfect. So you can see what it's done is it's opened up a new browser or Chrome browser more specifically, and it's taken us straight to the amazon.co.uk website. So, so far, so good. The next, there's a couple of steps or three steps to be specific that we then need to do. The first thing is going to be selecting books from our all drop down here. We'll then need to enter the text Excel into our search bar. And then finally, we need to click this search button to search and return our results. So if we close this browser once again, we can now move on to the next step. So as we look down the left-hand side again under browser automation, you'll see there's an option for web form filling. So what we'll simply do is expand that. And the option that we're looking for is to set a drop-down list value. So you can see the second from the bottom here. Click, drag, and place that underneath your step number one. The first option we have here, you can see web browser instant is browser. So what it's automatically done by default for us is it's picked up the browser variable, as you can see, captured in step number one, and it's predetermined for us. So it's gonna be utilizing that same browser element that we had. The next thing we need to do is we now need to create a UI element. So what it's wanting us to do is to define where this, um, this drop-down list is. So what I'll just need to do first is let's just open up uh, Chrome once again. Should have just kept it open in that first one. And actually, no, let's, let's go step back. So what we'll do is this rerun our, our flow and then it will pop up our browser exactly where we want to get to. Perfect, so that's where we want to start from. And I'll go back into Power Automate and let's just bring back in this set drop down list variable. Go into UI element. So here we'll go into add UI element. And you can see it's obviously gone back or it's closed Power BI, but it's brought up 
not only our browser, but also if I drag it in from another screen, you can see we've got this UI element picker. So this is what um, Power BI is using to help identify these elements. So in order for me to uh, identify this particular element, all you need to do as instructed here is to hold the control button and then click on the element of interest. As I glide over the page or the browser, you can see it's identifying various different elements on there. All I'm going to do is make sure I've got this all option selected here. So you can see, yep, when I hover over all, it's selected a range that looks bigger than my drop down list. But nonetheless, I'll hover over here, hold down control and do a left click. And you can see it's now picked up that information. So UI element is identified where our drop down is. But I now need to say what operation do I wish to do on this drop down. So in the operation, I don't want to clear options, I want to actually select an option by name. So all we'll do is click onto that. And then here we're going to free type what option we wish to choose. So for me, it's going to be books. Once that's been typed in there, we can go on to save. And that's the second step done. What I am going to do, however, is if we just reduce this down. Oh, no, sorry, not like that. If we open our browser, sorry, is I'm just going to double check and make sure I've spelled that correct. Yeah, so books is the correct term. Obviously, if I'd written book, it wouldn't match the option of books here. So that's just what I was quickly doing a double check on. The next thing that we want to do is we also need to add uh, the same instance, but for this search bar here to add our text. So we'll go back into Power Automate, and this time we'll do populate text field on web page. So this second one. Let's drag that into here. Once again, it's going to want us to define this UI element. So when we click into here, we can see our pre-existing one that we've set in step number two, but we're going to go into add UI element so that we can do another. Once again, UI picker has gone on a different screen. So just drag that back in for you here. And all we need to do now is again, hit hold down control. Having selected the input text, I'm going to left click. You can see it's obviously picked that section up. And all I need to do in here is now type Excel. Or if in your scenario you're wanting to search, do a different search term, obviously you can enter that different term here. What we'll now do is go save. And there we go, step number three is done. So the last part we had to do in terms of getting to our desired data is to now select our search button. So in order to do that, we'll just close this option here. And within the browser automation, we should better go down and find an option to click link on web page. So hopefully the steps that we're going through in the in their titling in, uh, in Power Automate, you see these steps here, and as we're stepping through them, it's starting to make logical sense in the steps that you as an individual would also go through if you were to try and get to the same result. So let's do one more UI element, add UI element, drag that back in from the other screen. And the last one we want to do is hold down control and select this search option here, or not option, the search icon. And you can see what it wants to do is do a left click. If we were to expand on this, you can see we have a number of options available to us, should they be appropriate. But we're just going to stick with a le left click and select save. So now might be a good time to retest our, what we've done so far. So let's just close our browser and do the all important save just to make sure we're not going to be losing any of the work we've done so far. And give that a couple of seconds more so it can like, save the flow. So let's now click run and see what happens. So what should happen, hopefully happen first is the browser will load on our screen. You can see the drop down will now go and select books. Excel is added, search button is selected, and there we go. We've got our list of results all matching our search term of Excel. So, so far, so good. So we now move on to the part of actually extracting the, the information that we require from this page. So what we'll do is now go back into Power Automate. And again, under the browser automation uh, section, we're going to now expand web data extraction. So we we'll should just expand that. And we'll go to this very first option here of extract data from web page. So we shall drag that over to here. And so far, you can see this information is populated here. But what I need to do now is navigate back into my uh, Chrome browser. And as always, the pop-up is going to go to a different window. But this is the desired result that we shall now see. So similarly to when we we're doing our UI 
um, information, we had a pop-up. Now we have this live web helper, which is going to help us to simply identify the information we wish to extract. So as you had seen previously, as we hover over the page, it highlights all the various elements available to us with the red border. So the first thing I'm going to do is hover over our uh, text that we wish to extract for the name of the book. So it is a bit fiddly and you do need to move around a bit, but hopefully, yeah, we can get there now. So we can see header two is the information that we require from here. So what we'll do is simply go right click, extract element value, and we can see that that is starting to match the title of our book. So let's just left click here. And you can see it's now been captured on the left hand side. What I'm going to do is now move on to the second item that we can see on the page, which is this book here, Excel 2020, and make sure that I extract exactly the same uh, element from this one here. So we'll go right click, extract element value, and extract the text. And you can see we've now got a list of all the items. So hopefully these should now start aligning with obviously the information that we have on this page. We obviously don't just want one piece of information, we want multiple parts. So I also would like to get the author's name and the date. So I'm going to go back to the first option here. I'm going to hover just to the right where we can get this div. And I'm going to go right click, extract element value. Oh, right click, extract element value, text. And you can see what it's now done is it started to identify a pattern in the information that we're extracting. So value number one is the book's title. Value number two is now the author and date. And as we scroll down, we can see that and you could go down and validate at this point to make sure the information here matches the values in the order you see on the right hand side. The third and final piece of information I'd like to get Actually, no, let's get a couple of extra pieces. So what I'd like to do is also get the price. So again, a bit fiddly, just need to hover around to you get the area selected that you require. So I'm just gonna again, right click, extract element value, and I want the text, what's the price? And the last thing I'm gonna do is just get this piece here. So where it says about Prime, get it Sunday, the uh, September 11th. So you may, this may not be useful information, but let's just add another bit there and go right click, extract value and select there. So you may be interested to know if it's available with Prime. So you can see for some of the values it's populated, others it's not. So once we've done that, we've done everything we need to do in terms of extraction. So we'll click finish. And the only element we need to populate on here is this store data mode. So in future examples, when we get look at extracting data from the web, we'll store this data as a variable so we can use it elsewhere. But for us in today's example, all we want to do is to store this data in an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll select Excel spreadsheet and we'll go on to save. And then of course, the last thing we need to do there is go into our write to Excel worksheet. So obviously we want to write this information into an Excel. So let's close our browser automation and now go into Excel. So the one step we have that's not within this section and then we'll go down until we can find write to Excel worksheet. Let me just click and drag that into here. So we can see we've got uh, our Excel instance. So it's obviously using the information that we captured here in step number five and we're going to write what's the value that we wish to write. So we want to write our Excel instance, so the data that we captured. So we'll just select that here, select. Uh, write mode on specified cell. Um, yeah, we can just go with that, that's fine. Uh, and where do we want to do that? We want to specify, we want this to be in column one, row one. So that's where we want to start entering our data. So we'll lastly select save, and then hopefully this is now giving us everything we need to extract that data from Amazon and extract it into an Excel file. So we'll just close our browser. So we start from fresh. We'll do the all important save to our Power Automate flow, just to make sure again, we don't lose anything. Pretty good ways of working, but I'm sure you're familiar. Keep saving as you go, just in case, because you never know what might happen with applications that get closed or problems that you run into. So let's now click run and see how it happens. So we should hopefully see the browser open up on the screen as well. Uh, yep, yeah, we can see we've got that there. And as we see the steps also updating in the background, we navigate through to do our search of Excel. The next piece which will be happening is our extract data from web page. Again, as you can see, step five is highlighted in the background. And typically it's opened in another page, but let me just drag that across. 
we can now see that we've got an Excel workbook that's opened and it's got our extracted data in here as well. So let me just do this. Let's go wrap text and condense this down a bit so we can see what we're looking at. So we've got it all on one page there and there you go. So we've got all of our book titles, our authors, and the, the, the price of the book, and then all this, also this information if you remember about our prime delivery. So when could we get this book delivered? Maybe useful information if you're looking for the earliest one that you could get delivered. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and it's probably worth mentioning at this point that you may want to add additional steps to now save and close this Excel workbook, but all those and various other scenarios we'll look at in future videos. So in order to make sure you see that content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and and also hit that bell notification so you're notified as and when those videos come out in the future. If you did enjoy this video, maybe it showed you some new functionality you weren't aware of, or we've helped answer a question that you're searching for, please don't forget to give that the video a like, as not only is it greatly appreciated by me, but it will help other people on YouTube to find this video and content. And lastly, if you do have any questions about the content of this video, do just drop a comment below this video, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.